Okay, I'd like to provide a couple of examples of from past thesis students of where you are using the literature in an integrative way to discuss a theme in the literature. So the first example, and I'll have the URLs or the web addresses for each of these three examples in the comments area for this video so that way you can actually go directly to the examples and look at them. But in this first example, I'm here on um, page 14, I believe it is, let's see, no, page 12 numerically, but it is the 14th page of the PDF. And as you can see, this is I'm into the literature review now, so I'm looking at the beginning of a section called Justification for Teacher Leadership. And you'll see that the student basically starts the section with a topic sentence. Um, so you can see that, actually in this case, sort of a couple of topic sentences. So the section she starts off with saying, traditional school leadership places the principal in the position of decision making. And then as a way of sort of starting off this paragraph, she moves to a second topic sentence. You know, over time, schools have moved away from the singular leadership model to a shared leadership model. And then she starts to look at that idea of moving from a singular leadership model to a shared leadership model using the literature. So she talks about, you know, leadership should be shared, distributed uh, in order to be effective and cites Gran 2000. Uh, she has another sentence here that you can see that includes characteristics of shared leadership and has another citation. Uh, then she's got another sentence here, um, and it's a little bit of a lengthy sentence. She possibly could have been broken up into multiple sentences. But as you can see, when you're looking at teacher leadership, particularly this idea of shared teacher leadership, there are a number of outcomes that you can have. And she's got a list of several outcomes here, about five or six or so. And as you can see, the first two or three, she's got this particular citation. Then she's got another one here that she actually has a secondary citation for. And then the last one, she's got another citation for. So as you can see, using this particular paragraph as an example, you know, she's been talking about a theme of the idea of you know, leadership shifting from a singular model to a shared model and sort of unpacking what that meant using various evidence from the literature that she had. You know, if you look at the next sentence, for example, or the next paragraph, sorry, you can see here, as schools work to implement reform, teachers are an important participants in that particular process. So that's her topic sentence. And you'll note that as she develops the rest of that paragraph, she's essentially trying to develop the importance of teachers in this shared leadership model that um, she's been discussing. You know, so the second par sentence she's got in here actually is a quote from one of her pieces of literature, you know, so essentially part of the evidence. Uh, then she talks about a specific study uh, that she identifies as a study and provides a little bit of background or context about that particular study um, to you know show how that particular type of uh, distributed leadership model uh, has been implemented. Uh, then she goes through and as you can see here has another direct quote um, that she has um, as part of her evidence. Um, then she talks about and she transitions here within the paragraph and there's a nice little transition sentence here professional learning communities or PLCs are one way of promoting teacher leadership and she could have continued that sentence and said within this distributed leadership model because that's you know how she's been developing this and as you can see here she then transitions to another quote from her literature that talks a little bit about PLCs and then summarizes a little bit about PLCs. Ideally, in all honesty, I would have, unless this sentence here was coming specifically from the previous citation, um, this was one that probably a sentence that could have been cited, although, again, if it was coming from that 2003 piece of work, then that would be acceptable. Um, so that's, you know, one example, and you can sort of continue to go through this one and see examples of this. The second one that I want to look at that I think provides a good model is this particular one. So this one, unlike the other one, which was looking at teacher leadership, this is looking at professional development in blended learning environments. So 
this particular section, and you can see it's a level 2 heading here, which essentially means that it is a subsection of a larger section. Um, in this case, this particular subsection is looking at core features. Um, so she starts off with a nice, broad, generalized statement. Um, in conjunction with structural features, the following core features were identified in effective professional development. Those included content focus, active learning, and coherence. And she cites essentially all of the literature here that those three particular things come from. And you'll note that what she does in this topic sentence is she actually uses as a, as a transition from the previous section. So you can tell, and, and if I were to scroll up, you'd see this is the case. The previous subsection that she's following here is actually a subsection called structural features. So she's trying to make the tie-in between the previous content and this content so you can sort of understand the progression in her writing. Um, so as she works through, so she's got that initial topic sentence, and she starts to develop out some of the ideas. So, um, you know, she's got a, a sentence in here and then moves into one where it starts to um, really look at some of the different aspects of the approaches for professional development that you could have here. And you can see she's got a couple of citations at the end of that. Then she's got another sentence here which actually ends this paragraph. Research has indicated these particular things and you can see because she used the term research that implies multiple pieces of research and you can see she's got two citations here at the bottom to support that. Continuing on, again a nice little topic sentence, essential dimension of high quality professional development is the degree of content focus, which essentially means now the rest of this paragraph is going to be focusing upon content and how that contributes to high quality professional development. So she starts to unpack that a little bit here with this sentence, and then you can see she starts going into the literature again to provide support for what she's talking about in this third sentence. And again, she does the same thing with this fourth sentence here. So as you can see, it, it's a matter of really you know, introducing a theme or a topic that you're going to talk about in a particular paragraph and then using the literature to outline the features of that particular topic or to provide support for that topic or to provide illustrations of, you know, examples of how that gets operationalized. Um, you know, so there's a number of different things you can do with it. Here in this third example, and again, this one here now is looking at the issue of number sense, early number sense, and in particular, um, response to intervention or response to intervention RTI within a kindergarten kind of environment, a lower elementary environment, specifically looking at this idea of early numeracy. Um, so as you can see, this particular section, and it's got a level one heading here, so we know that you know it's a main section. So what this particular student is doing is looking at the idea of critical components of number sense. And in this particular one, she talks about, um, you know, and she starts off with a nice little topic sentence for this section that looks at, you know, these two particular researchers have spent much of their career looking at student-centered um, lessons that are designed to be highly engaging as opposed to teacher-directed lessons. So you can see that basically her theme for this particular section is going to be looking at what constitutes you know high quality engaging lessons for number sense um, you know and as you look here she starts off by talking about one of those particular researchers and describes a little bit about what he's talking about but then she also provides support for that idea so this van de Waal you know, has this particular idea and, and has these particular recommendations, and she explains what, what the recommendations are based upon. But then she also provides other folks that have had similar findings. Um, essentially, this idea of supporting evidence, if you will, for Van de Waal's position. So as you can see, this Penner and Wiggler uh, et al., um, she talks a little bit about that particular one. Then you can see she transitions... Um, into this other section here where she's got several authors that she indicates supports it. Uh, similarly, and you can see here now she's transitioning again within the paragraph, so without it, 
it makes comparing relationships within um, numbers as more than, less than, or equal to more difficult. And you can see now how she's talking about, you know, these difficulties and, and ways in which you can do uh, those kinds of lessons. And you can see some specific examples here of lessons that people have uh, indicated. So, you know, Ginsburg et al. and Van de Waal talked about, um, you know, hands-on activities. And specifically, Ginsburg et al. were talking about games using dice and manipulating numbers. And then she moves back to Van de Waal here. So you can see how, you know, she's really been developing out this kind of theme here. And this is, you know, all three of these are examples of, you know, basically coming up with a theme or a topic that you want to discuss within that particular section or within that particular paragraph, introducing it through way of a topic sentence, and then using the research as evidence to support that theme or that particular topic sentence. You'll note that with the exception of a couple of contextual clues here, and you know terms like in a study or in research conducted on, or you know these kinds of terms that would you know, give you some sense as to what, you know, was going on in these pieces of literature. For the most part, you don't see any lengthy descriptions of, you know, this was a study about this, they found this and this and this, and then, oh, these other guys here did a study about this, and they found this and this and this. You know, it's not a discussion of one piece of literature or a description of one piece of literature followed by another piece of literature. You know, it's this kind of integrated approach. And using this example here, just once again, you can see... You know, the, the student starts off with Van de Waal and Burns. You know, then she continues to use Van de Waal. But then she has Penner and Wiggler here. You can see down here she's gone back to Burns and Penner and Wiggler and Van de Waal. Then she's relating Ginsburg et al. and Van de Waal. Then she's talking about Ginsburg by themselves. Then she's talking about Van de Waal by themselves. So she's not going in and saying, you know, this is all the things Van de Waal said. And these are all the things Ginsburg's, Ginsburg et al. said. And these are all the things that Burns et al. said. You know, she's using the literature as, uh, you know, in a convincing way as evidence for all of these kinds of things and using it in a very integrative approach. And this is really what you want to aim to do as you are working on your own literature reviews.